Hello everyone, my name is Gold Polish Links. I screw up a little bit the beginning, but whatever. Uh, this is Everlasting Summer. Let's continue. I was woken up by a hellish noise in my head. It turned out to be the alarm clock. Having found its pattern with difficulty, I turned it off. I got into at night 7 o'clock in the morning, quite so early. I stood in the direction of the other bed, opening my eyes. But there was no one there. The gambling must have gone somewhere already. I rose with difficulty and looked myself over in the mirror. A common pioneer, nothing more. If someone showed me photos of the local residents with me among them, I'd never recognize myself. The sun shined brightly outside. Nature seemed to laugh at me. I slowly walked to the war stands. I met only a few pioneers on my way, who were obviously in a hurry. Strange, where are they going at such an early hour? The cold water refreshed me a bit and all the memories of the last few days poured into my head. Well, I should find Yulia and try to be very polite and proper this time. After all, if you can't even understand a fellow human being when judging him by your own worldview and ideas, then how can you talk to something completely alien? Why should I alien or cat girls follow the same moral laws and draw the same logical conclusions as I do? They may perceive the universe in a completely different way, and humans are just ants to them. We don't think anything of killing a troublesome mosquito, so why should they pay any attention to me and my small problems? For so it could be all be totally the other way around. And you men may not be guilty in this. There was a rustle in the nearby bushes and I saw a familiar pair of ears. I see you. Yulia reluctantly left her hiding place. Come on. She snorted pouting. Are you watching me? Yeah, is that not allowed? Well, it's probably allowed. I wanted to talk to you anyway. Really? Me too? What about? I wondered. Something strange is happening here. Strange? What? I don't know. It's just everyone is behaving differently than usual. Something has happened. First you, then all the others. What are you talking about? I don't understand. I don't know, I just feel it and when I feel something it always happens. Yulia looked downcast and even a little afraid. At this time she totally doesn't look like any kind of higher being. Okay, let's investigate it together. No, no one should see me. Come here in an hour, until then. The sound of heavy steps sounded from the road. Someone running. I turned around and saw Slavia approaching. Yulia disappeared in the forest, as expected. Hi. I smiled. Yeah, hi. She looked ner really nervously, with her cheeks blushing, eyes sparkling and braids all messy. Semyon, it's... Come with me, you will see for yourself. What happened? Slavia face. Slavia's face wore such a plodding expression that I decided not to argue. She grasped my hand and dragged me to the square. The entire camp was probably there. As we turned the last corner, I looked past the crowd of pioneers who were start staring in the direction of Jenda and there was... A fucking city! In the distance where... Before there were fields and forests, a city slowly started to appear. At first it was faded, like it was made of smoke, but then it became more solid, as if emerging from a fog. Sky City, I thought at once. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. I thought at once. But strange or not, there was nothing special about it. Just a normal city. Plenty of those in the territory of our vast country. You could call it too normal, almost boring. A city would never pay attention to when passing by it in car or flying over it in play. But to see such a thing here and now, in the camp, lost in the vast fields and forests of another dimension, where the only life consists of the local pioneers, squirrels and mosquitoes. Even Kalgal is not that strange compared to this. Slavia kept squeezing my hand tightly. Pioneers whispered around us. 
as if afraid to speak in a loud voice, afraid that that illusion would disappear or even the opposite, it would become more real, crushing the little gums of Yanoi beneath it. But the city stayed in place, like a wide cliff rising above a valley. There was nothing special about it, neither gigantic skyscrapers, skyscrapers, skyscrapers <sighs> nor significant architectural constructs, only houses of different colors and different numbers of floors, industrial buildings and a hospital or something like it. You couldn't make out people or cars from the distance, but I was sure that the city is teeming with its own life, independent from our camp. I wonder if someone there got up on the roof and is looking at us through binoculars, trying to make out the pioneers crowding in the square. Indeed, it seemed like something flashed on one of the tallest buildings in the distance. But wait a minute. Binoculars. According to my estimations, there were about 2 or 3 kilometers to the city, so if I want to understand something right now, then I need binoculars or a spyglass. I ran to look at Mitrievna. Do you see that too? Yeah, of course. She replied as if restrained. I need binoculars or a spyglass. The camp leader stopped watching the faraway city for a moment and looked at me uncomprehendingly. Binoculars? Yeah, go to the cybernetics club. There should be some. I dart off and rushed in the direction of club's building. Electronic shooting were tinkering with something as usual and looked like vague news uh, nothing about the weird stuff happening in the camp. Binoculars, quick! I shall try to not to lose my breath. What is it? Haven't you seen it? Ah, uh, damn, you are sitting here with your robots like owls. Do you have binoculars or a spyglass? I pronounce each word slowly like a caveman who had just learned how to speak. Can you come explain? What this is all about? No time to explain. Give me the binoculars and hurry to the square. The young cybernetics didn't keep arguing with me, and in a minute we were standing with the rest of the pioneers as I used the binoculars to carefully examine the city which appeared from God knows where. At first glance, there was nothing special about it, and it gave me an impression of being from my time, the beginning of the 21st century, headboards, satellite dishes, pump-ups, shop signs, modern cars. Give those to me! The camp leader snatched the binoculars from my hands. So, is that your world? I turned around and saw Yulia standing next to me. You said no one should see you. Yeah, but... She was lost in thought. No one sees me right now. The pioneers didn't pay any attention to the strange girl with cat ears, too occupied by watching the far-off city. Do you know what it is? And why? No. She answered after a short pause. There was nothing like this before. Nothing at all. And what was there? Well, you came, then left, then came again. And what did you do all that time? I told you before, I was preparing supplies for the winter. I totally couldn't understand. Does Yulia really not consider this situation even a little bit strange? Or is she just good at role playing? However, who would need to put on such a show for my benefit alone? I'm not nothing but a guinea pig in a cage. I don't believe you. You should know of something. Semyon? I turned to the camp leader. I have no idea what all that is about, but it looks very strange. We should call the police. <laughs> okay, three and reacted in the usual way, like a normal person would in such situation. I turned back to Yulia to triumphantly inform her about it, but the cat girl had already disappeared. What can it be? The camp leader said quietly, not addressing anyone. I didn't know if I should tell her about myself, about the future, about traveling to the past. How do I know that the city really is from my time? Could it be just another illusion and the behavior of pioneers is just a part of it? And what if it isn't? This. I didn't manage to say anymore. Cool, cool! Liana shouted, appearing from nowhere. Let's go and check it out! Oh yeah, they must be expecting us. Wait a moment. We should think it over first. Lena came up to us, but didn't say anything. What do you think, Semyon? Slava asked me and stared at me, 
as if expecting an immediate answer. And actually, why would why should And actually, why should what I think about it matter? Kind of doesn't make sense or whatever. What is the difference between me and them which makes me all-knowing? What does it matter that I am new to this world? The things that are happening are as obscure to me as for any other local. I have no idea. Indeed, let's go and see for ourselves. It doesn't seem to be far. But it's dangerous! Isn't sitting here dangerous too? Lena says shyly. All the pioneers and the computer look at her uncomprehendingly. Well, I mean, if that city has appeared so suddenly, then something else could happen too, and we... She seemed to be getting completely confused, and so she stopped talking. Well, she's right. Alisa said in a lazy voice. I certainly don't understand what this is all about. But I'm going to just... I'm not going to just sit and wait if something else happens. So, if no one else is going to... And me! And me! Uliana interrupted her. Well, what then? What if it is just an illusion? Then we don't lose anything. I was a bit surprised by the locals' urge to find out the nature of this phenomenon, because before they had avoided any conversation related to my appearance in this world. Maybe it's a riddle inside a riddle, like two enclosed fears. fears. We are within the shell of the outer one, where everything is clear for them but alien to me. And that city is just the intersection of the two spheres. spheres. However, if it is true, then I should be located on the boundary, not knowing anything about one or another. Olga Mitrina was doubtful. Everyone else waited for approval on strict prohibition. Nothing surprising about that. In the life of the camp, organized as Swiss Watch, she was a tyrant and despot. But when the boundaries of Sofionic expanded and mysterious opponent appeared from beyond them, she couldn't keep the reins of power in her hands, started to panic, to feel restless on the throne which was losing its appeal. This may be the right time to start acting with confidence. I think we should go and check it out. How long should I sit here, trying to look for some answers? Where do I find them? In the canteen, in the camp leader's cabin, near the agenda statue. I have nothing to do here, especially when such an opportunity comes across. What? Olga and Tiernas shyly objected. What if we are already dead or something? I had to motivate the others in some way, but I hadn't decided to tell them about myself. How's that? Dead? And the expression of terror filled Lena's face. I'm not talking literally, but anything could happen. We can tell for sure what is going on here, so any theory has to be considered. Lena started crying, and Slava tried to come hard her. It's even more fun that way! And here's Uyana, for whom even death itself may not be a good reason to act calmly. We should go in any case, Alisa said cheerfully. I turn around and look at Shurik and Electronic. Well, we'd better stay here, try to measure it, make calculations. I see. I didn't actually expect any help from those two. Then you should get ready. Prepare everything you may need. Okay, Trina started to busy around. Flashlights, warm clothes, walkie-talkie. Do you have a walkie-talkie in the club? She addressed the cybernetics. They nodded in the affirmative. In half an hour, the investigation team gathered at square. Me, Alisa, Lena, Slavia, Uliana. I was given quite a heavy backpack, packed with warm clothes, flashlights, some other necessities, and in my hands I held a short wave walkie-talkie. I could certainly manage to walk those two or three kilometers, wearing it on my shoulders, but why not distribute items among everyone? Well, you know, I dropped the backpack on the ground and looked at the camp leader. I'm the only man here and you immobilize me. Everyone should carry their own share. The girls hesitated. The first one to come to the backpack was Uliana. She took a flashlight and a warm jacket crossing. The rest of them followed her example. I didn't expect such boldness from myself and expected even less for them to agree without question. 
Even the local pioneers may try to behave logically in critical situations. After a couple of minutes, we were at the camp's gates. I hope you understand that I can't go with you. <gasps> I have to look after the others and... It's alright, you don't need to explain. I didn't count on Olga Dmitrievna's help, especially as there was some truth in her words. Good luck! And don't forget that you have the radio. Uh, but aren't we going in the opposite direction? Right now? The summer sun scorched us mercilessly. The warm sweater in the back seemed a kind of mockery. I would give it and all the flashlights and even the walkie talkie away in exchange for the camp leader's Panama head and a bottle of water. And why didn't anyone think of bringing the water flask? Oh! There were less and less clothes on Alisa with every passing minute. Let's have a rest! I slowed down, sh shaded my eyes with my palm and looked in the direction of the city, which was to the right of us. It didn't seem to be an inch closer. Why not head straight to it? Juliana sounded annoyed. How's that? Straight through the forests and fields? I don't mind. Even that would be better than making detours. It would be quicker to go by road. Look, it makes a turn there. Slovia tried to reason with her. Do as you wish. Elisa flopped down on the grass by the roadside. I'll take a break. And we'll take a break as well. Let's end the episode here. Hope you enjoyed and we'll continue in the next one. I wonder where this is exactly going. Alright, bye.